Whew. Okay, here we go. I have f of x equals negative cosine of x minus pi over 4. So what are we going to do for this problem? Well, the first thing we want to do when looking at a problem like this is determine all of our main information. So the first important thing we need to determine is our amplitude. And the amplitude, remember, is going to be the half distance between the maximum point on our graph and the minimum point vertically. So the amplitude represents the absolute value of a, which in this case, our a is negative 1. So the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The next thing is we're going to look at our period. Now remember, the period is going to be the distance that it's going to take our function to complete one cycle. So the period is the rule of 2 pi divided by b, where b is our coefficient of x, which in this case, you can see our period is still going to remain 2 pi as b equals 1. Or I'm sorry, as b equals 1. The next thing is we want to determine what are the critical points, or what is the distance between our critical points. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2 pi, because that's our period. And I'm just going to take our period and divide it by 4, which equals pi halves. Then what we want to do is, you know, usually if you remember our parent graph of cosine, it started at 0, 0 comma 1, or when x equals 0, and it finished when x equals 2 pi. So since now we have some transformations inside our functions, we want to see is our graph still going to start at 0 and end at 2 pi. So to determine that, what we're going to do is we're going to say our start point is going to say whatever's inside of our function is going to equal 0. And then we're going to take the end point is going to be whatever is inside of our function equal to 2 pi. Because 0 and 2 pi were your initial beginning and end points of your initial period for your parent graph. So any transformation is going to affect those uh, start and end points. So by solving for x, I get x equals pi over 4. And x is going to equal 5 pi over 4. So when looking at our graph, so for our graph is now, rather than starting at 0, it's going to start at pi over 4. And it's going to end at 5 pi over 4. The next thing we also need to notice is we have a negative cosine, meaning we're going to have a reflection of the x-axis. So the first thing to do to graph this is we're going to graph this on an x and y-axis. All right. So I'm first going to graph my x-axis, and then I'll graph the y-axis. Now remember, the y-axis is when x equals 0. However, our starting point is going to be at x pi over 4. And then we're going to have four critical points from this measure. So I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start here. Now remember, our amplitude is the maximum, is the half distance of our graph. So since our amplitude is 1 and we don't have any vertical uh, transformations, I'm going to, the max height I'm going to go up to 1. And the minimum height is going to go down to negative 1. Now usually in the parent graph, we started at 1, 0, comma, 1. Since I'm reflecting over the x-axis, now my initial point it would be at 0, comma, 1. However, I'm not starting at 0. My now initial point is going to be when x equals pi over 4. So my initial point is going to be right here. And then my end point is going to be at 5 pi over 4. So what are each one of these intervals? Well, remember the critical points, the distance between the critical points is pi halves. So if this initial point is pi over 4, what I'm going to do is add pi halves to this. So therefore, my first point would be 3 pi, or the second critical point is going to be 3 pi over 4. Add another um, half to that, or uh, another half to that. I'm going to get 5 pi over 4. Then I'll have 7 pi. What did I do? Add 5. Oh, I'm sorry. That's wrong. <laughs> that's not 5 pi over 4. It's going to be uh, 6 pi, 7, um, 9 pi. 2 pi, which is over 4, so it's going to be 9 pi over 4. Sorry, I'm even making mistakes on my fractions. So therefore, I have 7 pi over 4, and this one would be 9 pi over 4. If you want me to explain my work, just so you can see. So when you add it, you have 2 pi divided by, or 2 pi, um, plus pi over 4. So therefore, x equals 2 pi can be rewritten as 8 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 which x is now going to equal 9 pi over 4. Sorry, I tried to do it in my head. And you know what? It's going to happen. So you can see now, here are my initial four points for my period. So I'm going to start down at negative 1 because of the reflection of the x-axis. My next critical point is going to be my x-intercept. 
Then I'm going to go to a max value of positive 1, back down to my x-intercept, and then go over down back down to negative 1. And the reason why I know these, each one of these hit, because I'm just all I'm using is the idea of what the parent graph looks like reflected over the x-axis and now shifted pi over 4. So the, graph, the first period of the graph is going to look something like this. Now remember, this graph is going to infinitely go to the right. So you can continue this pattern. But I'm going to work the pattern now in the negative direction. When I subtract uh, pi halves from here, I'm now going to be at negative pi over 4. So that's actually going to be my next critical point. Then I'll have negative um, 3 pi over 4. Then I'll have negative 5 pi over 4, negative 7 pi over 4. So what we'll look at is we graph to my next point. So I subtract 1 half, so I'm going to go up. I know my graph's not perfect, sorry. Go back up to 1, down to negative 5 pi over 4, and then come back down to negative 7 pi over 4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you graph with a phase shift and reflection. Thanks.